All right, you're listening to the Wednesday edition of the Radio Random Network. I'm your host, Hashtag RDM, Russell Devin McLean. We've got a great show for you today. I'm going to be joined by members of Rebel House Radio. Before we get to all that, I want to remind everybody to visit www.rrnonline.com. You can hear past episodes, find out more about upcoming guests, future events, and other things that we'll be involved in. All right, my guest today on a Wednesday episode on the Radio Random Network, they're from Los Angeles, California. They're good friends of mine, known as Rebel House Radio. Mike Mangay, or Mangy, see, I told you, fellas. <laughs> Mangy, Mangy, Mangy. There you go, and and Mike Blumberg. How, how you guys doing? Doing great. Fan- doing great. Fantastic. Glad to be here. Yeah. Yep. Now before we uh, before we hit the, the the go button here a few minutes ago, he was we just, uh, we've decided to to just call him Mike B and, and Mike M. Yep. That way uh, I don't put the uh, slaughter job on their uh, <laughs> on their names too bad. So so what's been so what's been happening, guys? I guess we'll start with Mike M. What's been happening? Wow, we have uh, it's been a long process. We uh, recorded a fourteen song album and. It probably took us about a year and a half to two years to do it because we had uh, some personnel changes in the band and uh, some challenges along the way. But uh, that's been the focus uh, of of uh, our lives probably about the last year and a half to two years. And we just completed that, and uh, we're rolling it out there now. That's awesome. Now. Yeah. I, oh. Go ahead, I was brother. going to say to uh, to kind of add to that. Um, at, at the same time, we so the album uh, was released um, within the last month or so, um, and then we worked had also been working to put together a phenomenal uh, music video, which we just released, and um, and and then as well, we we had our first uh, actual performance at this band in early May, and then we now have another one coming up at the end of this month. So. So, you know, actually, you know, the album, huge, it was a huge accomplishment for us, you know, produced the whole thing together. And then, uh, you know, now since then, we've also gotten the video release, um, which is, which is looking really good. And then we were also getting our live show going. Yes, indeed. Now that video release you're talking about, is that for, uh, that's for Can't Say No, is that correct? That's correct. That's. All right. Well, give us give us a little insight. Uh, we're we're going to jump around a little bit here, but uh, can't say no. The song is a great song. Can, can y'all give us a little insight on uh, what inspired that song? <laughs> well, uh, it's Mike M here. Uh, I, wrote, I wrote the lyrics, uh, but uh, I guess you know songs can mean different things to different people. So I don't always try to tell people what uh, inspired it, but. Uh, there's not a lot of lyrics in it, and it's uh, basically about a guy who I guess has just met a girl he's kind of infatuated with, but she's uh, she's a little standoffish, and she stands him up, and she's driving him crazy, and uh, he gets mad and hurt and uh, doesn't know where she is, and it's, uh, it's kind of mentally imprisoning him emotionally. But no matter how mad he gets, uh, once he finally sees her, he simply can't say no to her so it's basically a, a, a vicious cycle yes indeed that's something we can all relate to definitely <laughs> now is that that ain't based on a true story is it oh did you hear that question mike oh could you repeat that i'm sorry he said, he said it's based problem. on a true story <clears throat> yeah it's based on uh some experiences i guess in my own life Definitely. Yes, indeed. We we've all had that experience for sure. <laughs> we've all had them. We've all yeah. Had them. I've had them. Everybody's had them. Yeah. Now let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the band itself, uh, Rebel House Radio. Now, now, how did you guys come come to uh, I guess create this uh, this phenom phenom on the rise, so to speak? <laughs> well, we uh, I'll take this Mike B. So Mike and I have known each other for probably somewhere around 10 years now. Um, and we met because we were both kind of in the same circles playing music um, in LA. When we kind of briefly, I guess Mike had been here for a couple more years than I had. But um, And so we met each other uh, and it kind of instantly became really good friends. We had conversations 
about some musicians like Gene Harris, who's a great uh, piano player, and Stevie Ray Vaughan, who Mike and I both uh, think is you know phenomenal. I think it might be Mike's favorite musician, Mike M. Uh, so so uh, we kind of you know we we always have the Hendrix uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan argument all the time, but still to this day. But uh, so we we started hanging out, and actually I sat in with Mike's band um, on guitar, and then with his bass player. Um, had had introduced us and then and then after that we just kind of became friends over the years our bands have played together and uh then around uh, uh, i guess i want to say it was like probably four four or five years ago my my uh drummer in the band that i was in kind of decided hey you know asking maybe we should start this new thing so it was the three of us it was a trio and then we kind of had some issues uh, after producing an EP with that tr- that uh, trio that was more of an instrumental effort. We kind of had some some issues, um, and we had to part ways with the drummer, which kind of left Mike and I to our own devices. And we said, you know what, let's make a rock and roll album. And so that's what we did, and that's that's where that's what got us here. Yes, indeed. Now. Real quick, uh, Mike M. Now you're—I mean, well, both of you guys are very, uh, um, I guess, uh, how would I say? That you're very uh, successful as musicians on your own. I mean, uh, Mike M. You've actually uh, you shared the stages with uh, some pretty big big acts, correct? Well, I've, I've definitely been fortunate. Um, you know, there's not not a lot of guys that play a real B three anymore. I guess. Um, they're too damn heavy, man. They're heavy. <laughs> oh, as Mike B knows really well, I even uh, I even put out a YouTube video of me moving it to a gig a couple of years ago, just to just to pay tribute to all the guys before me who had to do that. But uh, so I know those guys. I know like I know John Grow down in New Orleans. He's a Hammond organ player, and I'm sure it's familiar with him. But yeah, there are guys out there, but. Uh, yeah, I've been fortunate, man. You know, I got hired to play with uh, Glenn Hughes and Deep Purple and the, the guys from Guns N' Roses, Matt Sorum and Duffy Pagan and Gilby Clark. They have a band called Kings of Chaos. Uh, they have Nuno Betancourt from Extreme in that band. And uh, they had a big award show uh, last November. Yes, yeah, so they hired me to play Deep Purple song called Burn. Um, and they wanted someone to play the real Hammond and so forth. And uh, John Lohr is one of my big influences, so that was just a great honor. But, yeah, I've, I've, I've had some great experiences. I've got to play with Keith Emerson and play with Billy Gibbons in that rehearsal and uh, Joe Perry and just a lot of a lot of great things so far. Yeah, yeah, Billy I mean, Gibbons, that's of... Uh, he's, he's from... Uh, ZZ Top. Yeah, ZZ right? Top, yeah. Yes, yeah, I guess you know. For me, it's uh, it's it's been you know pretty insane too. I mean, my my first kind of band in L.A. Um, we ended up going and doing playing some festivals. Mike's band did too. Um, we also kind of went to Baltimore. We got to open up for like Maceo Parker and and uh, which is a phenomenal band. And then and um and and uh, Robert Randolph and the Family Band, which is pretty sick. And then yes, indeed. Me, for me, my my own, it was uh you know through a connection. Um, basically just meeting someone. My, my father, uh, was, is really, was really into art. And I went and met this, uh, went to this art dealer that he gets art from and met one of the salespeople there. And we had this conversation and it turned out that he was, uh, managing this band, which was, uh, the son of Gil Evans' uh, arranger. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the son of Gil Evans, who's Miles Davis's arranger, Miles Evans. And so long story short, I ended up writing music and performing with that band and, and uh, recording an album for two years. And that was, uh, their their bass player was Daryl Jones from the Rolling Stones, and then a uh, number of different drummers: Bernie Dressel from Brian Center Orchestra, and Dee Ferroni from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, and then a, you know a cast of like the world-renowned jazz uh, players. So yeah, definitely a, a absolutely amazing experience getting to play with those guys for sure. Yes, indeed. Now you guys, both of you guys are extremely uh, versatile musicians, but um, with that said. Uh, now, Mike B, you was talking about the jazz. You you got a heavy influence on, on the jazz style, correct? On uh, yeah, I mean, well, you know, I I do. I, I'm a huge John Schofield fan. I mean, I, it's uh, for people that, that like John Schofield, they can probably hear it in my playing. Uh, but but I was raised on you know Led Zeppelin and Hendrix and classic rock. And then when I got into high school um, and, and a little bit past that, yeah, I, in college I took some jazz uh, guitar. I definitely love the feel of jazz and 
And, uh, you know, I wouldn't call myself a, a virtuoso in the jazz world, but yes, I, I do love it. And, um, uh, I like, uh, infusing different genres of music together like that for sure. Yes, indeed. And this question is for both of you guys. Where, where, where did you get the name from? Rebel House Radio. Where, where did that, uh, <laughs> a long list of f- name? thousand names that we crossed out. Pulling our hair out. <laughs> yeah, we actually we actually determined that we determined that you couldn't find any more one word band names that existed because they were all <laughs> taken. And then we determined you couldn't find any more two word band names that already existed. So then we went to three, and it was just yeah, just went through a huge list and eventually agreed on one. Yes, indeed. Yeah, don't you hate that when you're starting a new project? You got to have a name for it. <laughs> you know? you got to have a name. You got to have a name. <laughs> and you go to Google, and, and then they got these. I don't know if y'all have been in. They have, they got the sites where it's like a band name generator. Yes, and, and you yeah, like we, type we, in a few words. <laughs> yeah, we tried a couple of those too, and uh, I mean, we literally, uh, you know, we have documents in the Google Drive because we try to remain pretty organized when we do things, and I think we have like eight word documents with probably fifty band names on each one of them in there still. Yes, indeed. <laughs> But who knows, yes, those end up indeed. maybe becoming like album names or song names, and we can use them for other stuff down the road. Right. There you go. There you go. So, guys, I mean, y'all pretty much involved in, I guess, the independent uh, recording music world or, or whatever you want to call it there, the independent, you're an independent artist pretty much. Um, and w- with all of that said, uh, how is it uh, as far as like, uh, you know, you kind of got to handle your own social media, your own press packages and everything else? It's a lot of work. I mean, so how do you guys divide that up? Well, I, I guess I can start that. Um, so we, uh, for the release of the album, we actually enlisted a PR, an online PR company to, to help out um, with kind of getting our name out there. And I think that really has been beneficial for us. But as far as social media, um, uh, we both have, I mean, Mike was, uh, you know, he's had a, a ton of experience with his, with Big Organ Trio and, and, uh, and I with Rebel House Radio or my other band. I'm sorry, with uh, <laughs> Revolutionary Side Effects, another, another three word, uh, band name. But, um, you know, as far as this band, we, we definitely have enlisted, uh, some of the tools that are out there today, um, that enable us to, you know, syndicate posts to, to multiple places. Um, we just, you know, done a ton of reading and Mike has read up about a lot of stuff and, and kind of have, you know, as, as we're all living in 2015, we're all aware of all these different social networks. So look, man, I mean, the bottom line is you just can't sleep. You have to work harder than anyone else if you want to stay on top of all this stuff. It's just the way it is. So that's what we try to do. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yes, indeed. Now, are either you guys, uh, are y'all married? Y'all have families? Um, uh, neither one of us are married right now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay, I, I was just wondering what the, uh, you know, if you had the families, what kind of support you had there? Or yeah, I mean, our, have, uh, uh, my, my, for me, it's, um, you know, uh, you know, the, the bills have to be paid as well. Uh, we're kind of getting stuff off the ground, so we both work hard. And, and um, you know, for, for me right now, my, my wife is my music. It's kind of the way I look at it. Yes, indeed. So, so what's in it for the future for the uh, you know the re- remainder of 2015, early 2016? You got it, guys. Got any big plans? Um, Mike, you want to take that, or you want to? <clears throat> sure. I mean, you know, one thing I guess would be uh, we released this music video, which in uh, this era of music uh, is, a, is a huge tool for a band, and we had. We got, we're very fortunate because uh, the director, uh, Mike Makara, actually works on uh, visual effects on huge movies like X-Men and Narnia. He and, just, started uh, working on, just started working on Alice in Wonderland, too, actually. Yeah, so he's, really? he's incredibly talented, and he wanted to tackle this project. He liked the song, and uh, he had a, a great DP with a just a Red Dragon camera, which is about the best camera you can get, so... Uh, we were going to do it last November, but we uh, ran into some issues and it had to be postponed. But uh, we finally got it done. It was about a three-day shoot. We got to shoot at a uh, renowned mansion called the Forrest Ackerman Mansion. And Forrest Ackerman, he coined the term sci-fi and was Rod Serling's best friend and all that stuff. And uh, it's a really cool place. So we uh, put a tremendous amount of effort into that thing, and it it came out amazing. And it, so that that release just happened a couple of days ago. Um, 
So we are now looking to push that, you know, out there really hard. I mean, it's just in the internet age, I mean, you know, we were playing live shows and we're playing some very select shows right now. Uh, but right. you can get your music across planet earth in, in one second these days. Um, which is which is amazing, and it kind of puts the, the power of uh, promoting your music in your own hands a little more than it, you probably could do in the past. So, uh, so yeah. we're, we're that yeah. So we're kind of focusing on on really pushing the music video out as much as we can. Get uh, submitting it to a bunch of different um, short film festivals and music video festivals because we think it's, it's that good. And um, and then as well, we're we're uh, speaking with a couple different companies about. Um, syndicating our uh, the album tracks for film and TV licensing, and uh, you know submitting them to uh, submitting our songs to a bunch of live uh, big music festivals um, for you know next summer um, for for um, the spring and the summer of next year um, as well. Uh, working on we we have a, a live performance that's coming up on July 24th at Brennan's in Marina del Rey, California. Um, playing that's with right. Us. It's a free show. Yeah, so that's right. So it's gonna be an awesome show. We're playing two sets um, and no cover, and we got some some new material. We'll be playing there. So we're also working on new material at the same time as as uh, you know working up just more songs uh, for for our live performance. Um, and yeah, so we're just trying to hit it from all sides. We're trying to get our get our music out there to as many people as humanly possible. And we do feel like the record is really diverse. And so, you know, one track might be appreciated by, by one audience versus another. And we're, we really intend to use that to our advantage and, and uh, get it out there to as many people. I kind of also have a, a little plan that I've been kind of thinking about for a while now to, to uh, strategically contact, you know, large advertising agencies and, and directly try to get our, our stuff in, in TV commercials. And I mean, you know, all those things, I, I, I've had a little bit of a history in the music licensing world. And, um, you know, this this one guy, this composer that I worked with, actually got a song played on a TV show in Australia. And the next day, 30,000 people downloaded the song. So it's just really about, you know, taking the music, taking our vehicles we have now and getting it out there to as many people as we can through visual, you know, visual platforms like YouTube and also through licensing on uh, TV. And, uh, and, you know, just becoming better musicians. And uh, promoting the live show, doing everything we can, and social media, of course. There you go. Now, um, before I let you guys uh, go today, uh, real quick. Now, you're both songwriters. You're both decorated musicians. Can can you give advice to uh, any uh, inspiring uh, songwriters, musicians, or recording artists that uh, possibly would want to follow in your footsteps? <laughs> you can go ahead, and Mike. I'll, I'll go. Ahead. Well, I mean, it's just for my own perspective to thine own self be true <laughs> number one follow your heart and your passion but number two realize that uh it's a lot more than just writing music and being a musician these days if you want to be successful you have to really relentlessly tackle the, the business side of things and the social media uh, to be able to get your stuff out there because there's so many people putting out music these days that uh you really have to work harder than the next guy. And until you have somebody else taking care of all those things that you might not want to do, um, you got to do it yourself and you got to read about it. You have to, you know, there's plenty of books on how to manage social media sites, and YouTube and strategies for that stuff. And you just really have to educate yourself and uh, kind of wear a lot of different hats. Because if, yep. you, if you only put your music out there and you only are a musician, it's, it's probably not going to be enough. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's from my perspective on on the on the songwriting side of things, I mean, <clears throat> they're really there. You know, a lot of people say there is a kind of a, a, a strategic way to go about writing songs. And for me, I mean, I, I have a also have a piano background. I think piano is huge. I think the melody of the song is huge, um, and it's something that I personally haven't. You know, I'm starting to kind of focus on more. Um, I feel like writing a melody uh, first and foremost a lot of times can, can give you a lot of different options melodically for the different chords that you can outline around that melody. Um, and, you know, it, it's also, it doesn't always come to you at one time. I've heard a ton of interviews where people talk about, you know, how they wrote certain different songs. And some people say, hey, it came to me in, you know, 15 minutes. And other people say it took me five years. And that's the same way it's been for me personally, where, you know, I might have a cool, like, cool progression or riff or, or, or idea that I come up with. And it just kind of 
sits in the memory banks and stews for a while. And I think sometimes you have to let things develop like that. Um, and, and right. in some sorts of certain situations, the, the, the vocals and the, the you know, the, the lyrics and everything come naturally. And in other situations, they kind of, you know, you kind of have to work and make everything fit together, but it's really, you have to let it be organic and you have to record everything you do because you never know when one little idea is going to turn into like the best song of your life. So that's, that's my advice. Yeah, that's important. Record everything. Yes, it is. Yes, you, indeed. You that's that's some good advice too, man. Yes, you're right about that. As a matter of fact, you know, not to change the subject, I, Charlie Daniels was on last week and we were talking about The Devil Went Down to Georgia, which was probably Charlie Daniels' you know, biggest hit. Wow, that must have been an awesome interview, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Charlie's a good guy. <laughs> but he, he was, uh, you know, it just come on. It was one of those things where they just so happened to have the recording button, you know, they hit the record button at the right time and they were just fooling around. Yep. Wow. And then there, and there it is. I mean, yeah, especially with these phones that we have these days, which are they're really computers. I mean, there's a bunch of songs that just you think of the melody while you're driving somewhere and you just sing it into your phone and then you revisit it and voila, six months later, it's a song. But if you didn't record it in the first place, it would have been lost to oblivion, you know? I will I will say, don't ever record your song ideas on your iPhone and intend to save them for years because I unfortunately lost like hundreds of them <laughs> about six months but ago. It, 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 so, <laughs> come on, man. Too. Advice to all musicians. Do not say, think that your iPhone will save all your song ideas. <laughs> Put that shit on a hard drive after you record it. That's huh? right, exactly. Back email that stuff it. up. Yep, email it to yourself. Yes, indeed. Guys, it was a pleasure and an honor to talk with you you today, both of you, Mike Gam and Mike B. Thank I'm you not going to say your last names because I certainly don't want to botch them any more than what I already have. Well, hey, but for just, everybody out there listening, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, if you want to check out the music video that we just released a couple of days ago, it's, it's uh, picking up a lot of steam. Um, you can just go to our website, which is just uh, rebelhouseradio.com, and we put that up on the homepage. Um, through our, all of our social media, you can see that we've also, uh, it was premiered on a, on a, a site called Hellhound, and um, you can go check out the write up there, which is really good. But yeah, uh, on the on the homepage of our website, so it's really easy for everyone to get to. Yes, indeed. And then you also have the links up there for Twitter, which at Twitter, you're at Rebel House Radio. That's pretty easy to remember. Yep. And right. uh, we're going to share all of those on, the, uh, on our website at rrnonline.com. Guys, again, it was a pleasure talking with you. Thank and, you. Uh, the name of that, uh, the name of the album is uh, "Can't Say No." No, can't album. say no. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. One more day. One more day. One, One more day. Of album name and the uh, the song and the video is "Can't Say No." Yes. That's it. That's it. Be sure to check out. Uh, you know, if you're uh, you go check out their songs on. Uh, if you check them out on. Um, SoundCloud and all that good stuff. The Soul Remedy, that's that's one of my favorites. Oh, thank you. It was again, we'd love to have you on in a couple of months, see where you get to. Absolutely, yeah, man. Awesome. It was a lot of fun. Thank you very much, Russell. All right, y'all too, guys. Y'all take care, Mikes. You too. Right, take care. <laughs> Later, man. All right. Bye. Later, brother. All right, that was Rebel House Radio, Mike B. and Mike M. Good interview, good guys. They're out there doing it. And I have a lot of respect for for the independent artists that are out there. A lot of them have to do, you know, like their own PR work and stuff. And unfortunately for Rebel House Radio, they do have PR. And I'd like to give a shout-out right now to Miss Brooke at Cyber PR for hooking us up with Rebel House Radio today. It was a fun interview. Had a good time talking with those guys. A lot of knowledge. Very... I encourage everybody to go check them out because they're very, very decorated. Uh, they've shared the stage with, with a lot of different bands. Really enjoy their music. From Southern California, the Rebel House Radio. It's really good talking with them. All right, guys, that's it for the Wednesday edition of Radio Random Network. I'm hashtag RDM Russell Devin McLean. Don't forget, we will be back here. Friday on the Radio Random Network when my special guest will be Miss Carissa Lee. She is an up-and-coming recording artist tearing Nashville up. She's done a lot of great things, and we're going to be talking to her. She's got a song out. It's called Bad Boy. You can look it up. With all of that said, you subscribed. You're listening, and I sure to hell hope you enjoyed. I'm hashtag RDM Russell Devin McLean. For more information about the Radio Random Network, just go to www.rrnonline.com. Look at the show notes for the links that we talked about here on today's show. Thank you so much for listening. 
We will talk to you Friday.